Okay, let's continue. Uh, this is going to be a short video. I just want to show you another technique with arrays. And uh, again, this is a little artificial because we're doing a laid objects approach. So I'd, normally I'd use this technique and I'd create a class. And so instead I'm going to have parallel arrays. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to refactor for the second time one of our previous demo programs. Okay, so this is our histogram program, and you recall that we refactored it by creating this static method. And so instead of having all this code repeated every time we had a player, we uh, encapsulated it in a method, and we passed the name of the player and the number of wins that they have. And so here you can see the three calls for our three players. So what we're going to do now is we're going to refactor it again and we're going to put the information about the players and their wins into two parallel arrays. So uh, let me go ahead and start that and then you'll see uh, how this is going to work. So we're going to declare a string array called player uh, players. I always name my arrays with a plural and then usually I'll use a single for the uh, loop. So string array players equals, this is going to be an array literal. And so I'll go ahead and start doing this. So the first player is Tom. And then the next player is Jan. And then the third player is uh, Betty. All right, now we're going to go ahead and add a bunch more players. And uh, let me just go ahead and uh, close this out so we have a little bit more screen space there. So let's go ahead and add Bill and Sally. Oops, forgot to quote that. How many we got there? Uh, how about one more? Uh, let's see. How about Lucian? All right. And then we close off our array literal and we put a semicolon. Okay, so now I have an array of players and uh, I'm not going to need these statements anymore. But I am going to need a new array that has the wins. So array wins equals and then again this is going to be an array literal okay now uh, what here's where the parallelism comes in you should recall now that this is index 0 so in the players Tom is index 0 Tom's wins will be index 0 uh, in the wins array. So that was 13. And then Jan had 26. And uh, I think Betty had 9. I forgot now. Doesn't matter. And then the next one will be Bill's wins. And uh, we'll give him 15. And then Sally's wins. Let's uh, give her 24. And uh, then Lucian's wins. Uh, let's say Lucian is a new player, so he gets six wins. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and close this off. And so again, you, do you see how it's parallel here? Tom, Tom's wins. Jan, Jan's wins. Betty, Betty's wins. So in each case, it's using the same index. So zero for Tom and 13, one for Jan and 26. 2 for Betty, and 9. And then the rest of this is pretty straightforward. So now I can get rid of this. And I just put in a for loop. 4. And then int player equals 0. While player is less than players.length. player plus plus okay so that's going to be a loop that goes through my player array and 
then I'm going to print. Now, so instead of Tom, this is going to be players, square bracket, player, which is my counter. And then instead of Tom wins, this is going to be wins, square bracket, and then the same player. Okay, so look at how this works. As we go through here, player is going to go from zero to uh, one less the length of this. And we can just see, because it's small enough, that we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So player is going to go from zero to five. And then uh, player zero is Tom. Win zero is Tom's wins. So the two parallel arrays, again, the, the parallelism is that the same index is the same record. And this is a way to create uh, records when you don't have objects. So normally in Java, I would do this with objects, but we don't know how to do that yet. And there's no limit to how many uh, data points I can have. So I can have multiple parallel arrays, more than two. So if you think about a typical uh, business kind of record, you might have first name, last name, uh, email, phone number, etc. And those all could be done with this parallel array technique. Okay? All right. Uh, let's see here. I think we're good to go. So, and not, notice I don't have to change the method at all. So the method still takes the uh, player as a string and the total wins. And now I only have one call. So if I had uh, 30 players here, then I could still do this very easily. So the code's really compact, easy to read. And uh, let's see what we get here. So there we go. So now you can see Tom, Jan, Betty, Bill, Sally, and Lucian. And we still have our histogram display. And it looks like Jan is still the winner of uh, our games, whatever the games are. Okay? So again, that's a pretty short video this time, but I just wanted to show you this parallel array technique. And also I wanted to again reinforce this idea of refactoring. So, um, you know, uh, you get the program to run. You definitely try to plan it well, okay? But you get the program to run and then you come back and you add functionality and you work incrementally. So here I had a working program and I improved it by using the arrays. Now it's real easy to add data to the program, right? So for instance, if uh, I want to go ahead and add another player, I just do that here, Frank. And uh, then I add Frank's score in and then I just run the program. So it's very easy to update and maintain the program. And again, this is a bit of a trivial example because when we have large amounts of data, they're going to be in a file. And later on, we'll see that it's more natural to use objects rather than parallel arrays. But uh, it's important that you know these things. You're not going to always program in Java. If you go on to do software development, you might use a language that doesn't uh, support objects. So for instance, uh, we, if you're programming in C, you uh, might want to use the parallel arrays there. Okay? All right, I think that's pretty good. We'll call this one done. What do I always say? Code on, dudette.